In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And greetings, everyone. And I continue to wish you Happy Easter as we enter into this beautiful Sunday of the second Sunday of Easter, or as we like to call it now, Divine Mercy Sunday, when we really focus on the goodness of God in our own personal lives and in our lives as a community. So as we begin our celebration today, let us now pause for a moment and let us ask the Lord with confidence to forgive us of our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed upon all who all that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, 
Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, happy Easter again, everyone. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, or, second, or the second Sunday of Easter. And it's an interesting Sunday because in some ways the hardest thing we, ha we deal with 
And the thing we most misunderstand and sometimes even most fearful of is God's mercy. Of all the things in the world that we seem to be most fearful of, we're fearful of God's mercy. And it seems like we come at it in two radical ways. Number one way we come at his mercy, we tend to believe that we're not worthy of the mercy of his mercy, that we're so bad off and that we're so terrible that we're not worthy of anything, and so we kind of cower in our caves or our tombs somewhere, believing that God would never be merciful to a sinner like myself. The, or the other extreme is, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing well, I'm the coolest dude in the block, and I don't need anybody's help. It doesn't matter how much mercy they offer, it doesn't matter. I'm cool and I'm taking care of myself. Both these stances in many ways are saying we don't even want God's help because we're afraid of it, we're afraid of the consequences of it, or we just don't need it and we're not interested in it because we can take care of ourselves kind of that independent soul that we Americans in some ways love to, love to glorify and celebrate that rugged individualism when in fact there is no such thing. We need each other. And the fact that we were born and we were created by God to need each other reminds us again of how much we need God's mercy. This last and during this pandemic year, we have really discovered in many ways why we need God's mercy. The inability of ourselves to really forecast our own future or to do anything or to see the world as a dark place, which it has been for many for so long, is a reminder of how that mercy can carry us through, through dark times and through fearful times. It can build our confidence, but not overwhelm our need for God with the confidence that he offers us. God's mercy is about recognizing and understanding our humanity. It's about recognizing our fears our uncertainties, but also recognizing our hopes and our dreams and the, and the direction that we hope to, that we can go. It's a mercy that calls us to our better selves. And during this year, of course, we have seen so many of our better selves take place. I marvel at those who have been on the front lines. I marvel at those who've stood up and cared for others when in some ways it was one thing you didn't want to do, but they did it anyway. That mother who lost her, her family and went out and became a vaccinator. Others who stood up and have called us to be our better angels. These are the folks who understand what God's mercy is all about and is inviting us to be merciful to each other. The rich thing about God's mercy is that it is a gift that empowers us if we're willing to accept it. If we're willing to recognize that we are worthy of that mercy, no matter how sinful we are, and that no matter how arrogant we are, we need to recognize we need that mercy. And it's all those folks that recognize that mercy that are empowered to do so many great things, so many wonderful things in the world. We have heroes all over the place, historically, and we've seen them now. One of the, one of the interesting things that come out of a tragic moment is the sight of these unsung saints that are among us, who care for us, and who do so much to help us get through these rough times. That's what God's mercy looks like. That's what God's mercy calls us to be. We receive the mercy of God because we are worthy of that mercy. But now we must take that mercy, that gift of life that God gets us, and we must share it with others. And be that merciful presence of Christ among those who are still fearful, for those who are still struggling, for those who are uncertain about the future, for those who are angry, alone, alone, and fearful. Because it's that mercy, that mercy that God offers us and that we share, that brings us out of the darkness and that allows us to walk into the light of Easter. If this isn't the Easter message, then I don't know what is. So let us pray and celebrate this day, the merciful love that God offers us through his sacrifice of life and death and resurrection. And let us take that gift, that power that he gives us, and let us be a presence to our community all over as we walk with each other into a new dawn and into new light. Happy Merciful Sunday. Let us continue our prayer.
gathered as believers who are one in heart and soul. Let us pray through Jesus, the Son of God, gloriously arisen from the dead. For the church, that she may give testimony to the resurrection of the Lord by its love of God and its generous care for those in need, we pray to the Lord. For the world, that world leaders may find the means to conquer mis mistrust and mut with mutual respect and understanding, we pray to the Lord. That the homeless and dispossessed may find among today's Christians the same generosity that marked the community at its beginnings, we pray to the Lord. We who have not seen the risen Lord and yet have come to believe may be blessed in sharing the peace and forgiveness we have received, we pray to the Lord. That with the continued success of the vaccines and our own discipline and prayer, we may protect life and defeat this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. We would now like to take a moment during which we invite everyone at the same time to say aloud the names of those persons you would like to remember in prayer. For all of these people, we pray to the Lord. For those in our book of life, the children listed in our book of innocence, and for Florian Maher, who died this week, and for Maria del Carmen Espinosa, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions on our wailing wall, those remembered on our wall of remembrance at the labyrinth, and for all of the spiritual and material needs of our parish community and its members, along with all those prayers that are in the deep recesses of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. On this Sunday of divine mercy, we discover that we are all entitled to God's loving mercy. Empowered with this mercy, help us, Lord, to turn our lives into an example of your love and hope in our wounded and suffering world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. And let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those that you have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now let us join together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
And now in our homes and among our friends, let us safely turn to each other and offer each other a sign of God's mercy and peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our redemption of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a, just a couple of reminders. First of all, as I mentioned to you on Easter, we have moved our 1 o'clock Sunday Mass now to 11 o'clock. It seems to be that that's a better time for most people, and it seems to be, uh, and then what we will do is as the crowds grow and as we can start to loosen up, we will look at restarting that 1 o'clock Mass later on in the year. So again, if you wish to come to our Masses, as always, we urge you to register. You can register online, or you can call up Margaret and, uh, and Steve, and they will help you and assist you in every way that they can to make sure that you're comfortable for one of our celebrations. The other thing I'd like to urge you on, and the bishop has brought it up with some great concern, is that there are some out there, especially in some of our communities, that are very reluctant to take the vaccine. They're citing history and how rapidly it was brought up and other things like that. Well, those are all actually the miracles of our science and the miracles of our creativity that we are celebrating. And we know now that these vaccines are life-saving, especially now that we're starting to see another rise in, in some of the variants. This, this week we had uh, over a thousand cases in a day for the first time in a month. And so we're kind of racing against time as well. The vaccines work and they're important that we can pass that on to our neighbors and friends who may be reluctant to take it right now. It's very important from a community point of view, from a moral point of view, and from a social point of view that we can indeed help each other out and make sure we get those vaccines because it's those vaccines that will allow us to reopen our church, to be able to bring more people in, and to be able to eventually get rid of the reservations and all the things that we're having to do now. The quicker we can do that, the better off we're gonna be and the better off we will be because we'll be able to connect with our families and friends. For those of those who are reluctant, for those of you who may be reluctant, I urge you to consult your doctor. Let you, if you trust your doctor, you know he's gonna tell you that he know that he or she is gonna tell you the truth about how important they are. And you listen to it, they'll explain it to you in every detail that you may wanna hear so that you can make an informed decision. We urge that you will get those and we pray that you will be. And for all of those who have received your vaccines, congratulations, it's a new life that you're entering and it's a more hopeful life that we are entering as well. Part of our discipline, part of our working together has been to support each other in each of these stages. And it is amazing how well we have done. It's been remarkable from one end to the other. Even the last weekend when we were celebrating Easter was a remarkable statement of how we care for each other and how we were able to celebrate this beautiful time of resurrection. It's time that we experience resurrection as well. And one of the ways we do that is with these vaccines. So I hope if you are reluctant or not quite sure, talk to your doctor. Listen very, very closely to what they have to say. I'm sure you will make the right decision once you hear, once you hear them. And, then, and finally, as always, we wanna thank you for your donations and continuing to help our parish stay strong during these troubled times. We have been successful and it's only been because of your care and your concern and your continued concern in donating that is keeping us going. So on behalf of our staff, on behalf of all of our parishioners, I wanna thank you for the wonderful work that you're doing and the continued journey of hope that we are taking. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives, the one who comes.
I'm sure.